I'm back. I'm back. Like MJ with the 4-5, I'm back. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mike Rich, man. What's happening with y'all today? I hope everybody, man, each and every one of y'all is having a blessed Sunday today, April 19th, 2020. Man, and y'all already know what today is. The longly anticipated, waited for a documentary on Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls last championship season entitled The Last Dance on ESPN, bro. It's going to be lit. It's going to be fire. It's going to be all that in a bag of tater chips. Just to bring it back to the 90s retro, just going to be all that in a bag of chips. You feel me? But anyway, man, to commemorate this monumental documentary that I just hope is everything that I uh, wanted to be, the 10-part documentary, man. Um, and we get two episodes tonight. Um, I wanted to do um, the Air Jordan Bread Black and Red Collection. The culture is calling it bread now, but um, it's always been the Chicago Bulls, original Chicago Bulls colorways, man, that represent the Chicago Bulls uh, and represents Michael Jordan more than anything, you feel me? So anyway, without further ado, we're going to go through 1 through 14, leading all the way up to that last dance as far as MJ's black and red sneakers, man. Let's do it. Of course, we got to start where it all begin with the Air Jordan 1 black and red things, man. This sneaker right here is, of course, MJ's first signature shoe with Nike. Signature shoe, period. But it's just like this one right here was not designed by Tinker Hatfield. I forget the designer name. He designed the ones and the twos. Um, but this, the Air Jordan one is like so iconic. It's just, I mean, you can't, especially the bread colorway. Like Chicago is my favorite Air Jordan one, but you can't, you can't, you just can't say nothing bad about the black and red Jordan ones, man. This is the 2016 pair. Have not worn this one yet, but it's just. I don't know, it's just a dope sneaker, bro. Like the black and red colorway. If y'all know me and my wife gets tired of it, my favorite um, color combination has always been black and red. And I think it had a lot to do with Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls, man. So the man, 1985 is when this shoe released, I believe. The first signature shoe, the uh, iconic Jordan wing logo, the Nike swoosh with the Nike branding. Um, you wouldn't even know if it was it was an Air Jordan if it wasn't for the Jordan wing logo. Definitely one of my favorites in my collection. That's, you already know, the Jordan 1s, man. The Jordan 2s, I actually do not own any Jordan 2s at this time. Um, they got rid of the designer after the Jordan 2s, and he had a good thing with the Jordan 1s, but he wanted to come with like Italian uh, sports car interior leather on the Air Jordan 2s. And they never, I don't think they ever brought out a black and red, especially, I'm sticking to like all original colors. So if they brought a black and red shoe out for some of these shoes later on, I'm sticking to the OG colors, man. So they had a white and red and they had a white, black and red in the Jordan 2. But I don't, I mean, they brought a retro that wasn't an OG color of the black and red Jordan 2s, but uh, I don't have that one in my collection. But um, anyway, so we're going to move on to the Air Jordan 3s. So after the Air Jordan 2 released, they uh, Michael Jordan didn't want that designer no more. So they brought in Incomes Tinker Hatfield with the Air Jordan 3. And this is what can be considered the bread uh, colorway, the black cement, got fully black upper with red hits going on. Great elephant print, Nike Air on that ass. It's just a dope sneaker, bruh. One of my favorite shoes, man, it's just, it's simple. And a lot of people say they're too fat. They look like pro wings. But when you were talking about back in the 80s, this just screams the 1980s. This one released in, what, 88? And it was just, man, it was just like a really, I mean, he wanted a sports car look for his shoes. It's, all of his sneakers have been like based off sports cars. And then it's just like the interiors and the exteriors. And when you really think about um, the stuff that MJ was into, he wanted somebody who can design the shoe like that had his preferences, you feel me? So that's the Air Jordan 3, black cement, fire, fire, fire. Air Jordan 4, bread colorway. Wow, the Air Jordan 4 bread. Just, I, I mean, I like this shoe almost as much as I like the um the Jordan 3 cement. It's just, a lot of people call it, a lot of people actually call this the Air Jordan 4 cement just because the um, gray is called cement gray or tech gray or something like that, I don't know. But um, this is a fire shoe. Love this shoe. Just it's just like man, just so MJ. So 1980, what nine when these release the flight patch on the tongue, the Nike Air on that ass once again. You had these little uh wings on the side of them with the waffles, bro. And um, 
a lot of this stuff was really innovative for the time, man. Uh, when Tinker Hatfield was designing these shoes, they knitted on the side, and then a lot, of, a lot of these sneakers, when you see, comes from one to the next shoe, it borrows something. For everything, almost everything, borrows something from the previous shoe. <clears throat> when you're looking at these shoes, almost all of these borrow something from the previous shoe. So that's the Air Jordan Four, red, black, and red. Y'all comment below y'all favorite, man. Great ins, man. These are just dope, bro. Just all kinds of dope. Bread, 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 black and red, black and red. We're gonna go to the Air Jordan 5. And when I say they borrowed stuff from the previous shoe, as you can see, a different kind of take on the knitted um uh side panels going all the way through the tongue and all that stuff. Um, this one right here, it doesn't have a whole lot of red in it, but it would be considered, in my opinion, the black and red colorway of the Chicago Bulls MJ collection. You got the black upper, you got the hit of the red um, jump man on the tongue, you got the red lace lock, you got the red Air Jordan on the inside of the tongue, you know, and the inside. Actually, the actual insole of the shoe is red as well. Um, definitely one of my favorite shoes. Not my favorite five. Actually, this is. Well, some of the newer colorways is my favorite five, but I, I, I think I like great fives. Uh, maybe a little bit better than these, I don't know. I actually like the uh, black tongue, uh, fire reds with the 23. Love that shoe, but we sticking to the black and red colorways, the Air Jordan 5 black metallic, man. Uh, next up, we got the Air Jordan 6. Y'all already know what it is. Black and infra red colorway. Growing up, the Bordeaux Jordan 7 and the black and infrared Air Jordan 6 was my favorite shoes growing up in the 90s, man. I love, man, when Jordan won his first championship in these right here, I mean, it was just like, I, I, it was crazy because I want, I didn't get the shoe when it first released, but I wanted it so bad. Like looking after the release, I was going, I actually bought, like when I was younger and I didn't know about fakes and stuff like that. I actually, when the internet first started kind of like jumping off, I actually bought a fake pair of these right here. And the way I knew they was fake, well, number one, when I first saw them, they looked a little iffy. I was like, oh, you know, they were the, the suede looked like carpet almost. It was real thick. And then um, after a couple of wears, all of this paint right here, all of this paint on the back heel of the shoe start to just chip off and flake away like nail polish or something like that, man. So I was like, man, this is crazy. But I've had this shoe probably three times since then and, um, and double ups and all that stuff. And it's still my second favorite shoe ever in my collection and in, in life. My second favorite shoe is the Air Jordan 6, black and infrared. And you got to remember that first championship against the Lakers. Rocking these things. Shout out to MJ. Shout out to the black infrared Air Jordan 6, man. We'll move on to the 7s next. We going in order. And Air Jordan 7s, man. Y'all know I love Air Jordan 7s. My favorite Air Jordan silhouette. You don't hear a lot of people say that, but I'm cool having the unpopular opinion when it comes to Air Jordan. But I love the Air Jordan 7. And the black and red version got to be got to be, got to be the Air Jordan 7 uh, shrug games, playoffs, and what everybody likes to call them now and what they're known as now. As the Raptors, I don't, I mean, I call them Raptors just because that's what a lot of people know them by. But of course, in 1992, when this sneaker first re released, the Toronto Raptors was not a uh, NBA team as of yet. I think they, 94, 95 when the Raptors came around. But um, so this originally is not a Raptors colorway. It wasn't based on the Toronto Raptors. I like to think of it as the shrug game myself. A lot of people call them playoffs, but the infamous shrug game, I talk about it on so many videos. MJ scored six three-pointers in like the first half against the Portland Trailblazers in the 1992 um, NBA Finals against Clyde the guy, Glide and them guys, man. And when he hit that last one, man, he just he, he just went down the court looking at the uh, commentators on the side and just, he just had them shrug like, bro, it ain't, I mean, it ain't me, man. It's just, it's, it's the game, you feel me? I am the game, you know what I'm saying? With the infamous shrug, so that's why I like calling these the Air Jordan 7 uh, shrug games, man. Love this sneaker, bro. Iconic, it's so many memories I have growing up from watching Michael Jordan play and the sneakers all linked to a, a point in my life, except for probably the first, the one through the Jordan uh, 4. I remember those, but I remember just being too young to even think about asking my parents for Jordans or anything like that. I think the first Jordan I had was the Air Jordan 6, uh, white infrared, then I got the Bordeaux. Um, Air Jordan 7 Bordeaux. That's why the 6s and the 7s hold a great place in my heart more than anything else is because those are the first ones I really remember watching him play. I really remember being into the game and then he was winning championships at that point, becoming so iconic. The Air Jordan 7, um, Shrug Games, Playoffs, and as y'all know, the Raptors, man. So the Air Jordan 8, 
Playoffs, I do not own. Not a big fan of Jordan 8s. It just like took a nosedive after the 6s and 7s hyped me up so much. The 8s just, to me, the 8s went down. Shout out to my guy Jumpman Bostic. No offense to you because that's uh, that's JB's favorite Air Jordan is the Air Jordan 8s. But I'm, that strap across, I used to like the um, Air Rays that had the strap across, but I've never been into the Jordan 8s. I've never really been crazy about them, even though for the channel and the YouTube, your boy just said, you know what, I should cop them because of the history and what eight meant for uh, what Jordan eights meant for the culture that '90s swag. But I never really been an Air Jordan eight fan. The Aquas would be my favorite colorway if I had to pick, but the Air Jordan eight playoff would be the black and red colorway in the uh, Air Jordan collection. So when we talk about nines, that's when MJ retired after the Jordan eights, 1993. He went to 1994, 90, beginning of '95, retired from the game to go play baseball. Um, the Air Jordan 9s are not my favorites either. I love the olive 9s, but as far as black and red, I think the charcoals, was that an OG colorway? I can't, for some reason, I can't remember if the charcoal, I think the charcoals might have been an original colorway. That would be considered the black and red, but seeing that he was not playing for NBA, playing in the NBA at all, definitely not playing for the Chicago Bulls, it wasn't mandatory, I guess, to bring a black and red colorway out at that point when he was not even in the league. We're going to move on to the Air Jordan 10. Now, he was still retired when the Air Jordan 10 released. But when he came back to the Chicago Bulls out of retirement, rocking the 45, y'all already know I'm back. You feel me? He was rocking the Air Jordan 10s. And this is the closest one. The Air Jordan 10 shadow was the closest thing to a bread Chicago Bulls black and red colorway um, in 1995 when he came back to the league. Uh, he had the only red is the red hit in the back. I like the kind of African inspired tone that was in the back of these. Um, Jordan always did something dope with his sneakers. And this shoe right here, bro, it's a lot of Air Jordan 10 haters. I don't know because of the toe creasing or because of the simplicity of the shoe. The Air Jordan 10 is fire. I love the Air Jordan 10, bro. Especially in the OG colorways, man. The All the um everything achievement that he had up until the time when he retired that first time is on the bottom of the shoe. The red, Air, man, it's just Air Jordan 10s are dope. To me, how simple the Air Jordan 10s is, I don't see why people love, I mean, love the Air Jordan 11s. They are better than the 10s. But they like the 11s so much, and they hate the 10s so much. And they're very similar sneakers, man, if you really look at the design of the shoe. So the Air Jordan 10 Shadow is what I would consider the black and red colorway for the um, Air Jordan 10s in the Jordan Bread collection. So we are to the second three-peat. The first three-peat is the Air Jordan 6, 7, and 8s. And we are to the second three-peat when they came back in 1996 to win that championship against the Seattle Supersonics. And we starting with that Air Jordan 11 bread thing. The 72 and 10 team, the uh, Batman, uh, Superman, Batman, and Rodman, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and uh, Dennis Rodman, man. That season was iconic. Um, it's, not, it's not the best season ever. Uh, we did have the Golden State come back with a 73 and 9. Um, but the Chicago Bulls actually went 72 and 10 and capped it off with a championship run against the Seattle Supersonics. This sneaker is iconic. It's not a lot that can be said about it. It's based off of a lawnmower, a sports car, uh, or the drop top on the sports car. It's a Michael Jordan sneaker in its finest. Like I said, it took a lot of cues. Like, from the Jordan 10, the Air Jordan 11 took a lot of cues from the Air Jordan 10. Looking at the straps on the side, as far as even how the, the mud guard goes around, the toe and all that stuff, man, the Air Jordan 11 is no doubt one of the most iconic sneakers, especially in the black and red colorway for the Chicago Bulls. MJ had everybody on the team. It was almost like a team Jordan with the, for the Chicago Bulls because everybody on the team was rocking Braid 11s. Ron Harper, you seen Phil Jackson rocking Braid 11. You know what I'm saying? You just, it was just a dope thing to see uh, when they came back. And I really remember these years. Of, like, I remember watching these playoffs and these finals vividly on TV Saturday. Me and my brother, we made popcorn and all that stuff. And um, we just, like, a bunch of us just sat around the TV and loved to watch the playoffs and the finals with the Chicago Bulls, man. And that's what this shoe just remind me, reminds me of. At one point, this was my favorite sneaker. Um, but the 7 has more nostalgia factor. But, man, you can't deny the Air Jordan 11 black and red, bread things, man, fire. Second three-peat championship uh, against the Utah Jazz, man. Like, and y'all already know that series is mostly iconic and known for the infamous 
flu game. We don't know what was really wrong with MJ in that game. They say he was sick to his stomach, throwing up and all that stuff. They had no energy, dehydrating and everything. And he rocked these things right here. The black and red 12s, AKA Air Jordan um, 12 flu game. A lot of people don't even like calling these flu games because they came out with this like special edition with suede and had the little sick logo. Like he was sick and stuff like that. This is the original flu game because it's, I mean, it's just the OG shoe. It's the original shoe. It's the shoe he actually wore in the game. If he gonna wear the shoe in the game and he had the flu symptoms in the game and he was rocking this shoe, I'm gonna call this one the flu game. Cause this is the one he was wearing. The all leather guy with the tumble, the mud guard, all this good stuff. And then it's that, black. this right here is the epitome of black and red because there's no, it features no more colors but the black and red. That's what I like about this shoe. Nothing but the black and red, bread, flu game, Air Jordan 12. Man, it's just fine. You, can't, you just can't, can't say too much about it, man. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that documentary tonight. Going through all these sneakers just got my mind going, man. I'm ready, I'm ready for it, man. So next up is the Air Jordan 13s. Air Jordan 13 bread. This actually Jordan um, rocked this shoe for the 97, 98 season, most of the season. The playoffs, oh, I want those back so bad. Those can be considered a bread too, but this one has to be. It's the all black, the all red. Not one of my favorite shoes, definitely not one of my favorite 13s. I love the playoff 13s the best. Love Flint 13s. They come out this year. Can't wait to get my hands on a pair. But this was just, it was an iconic shoe as well. Playing against the Utah Jazz again in the 98-99, I mean 97-98 season to win that fifth, uh, to win that sixth championship. This was the last dance. I'm, when you think about the last shot, you think about the 14s, but the 13s was definitely the shoe that he wore a lot in that last dance, that last season with the Chicago Bulls, man. And you can't beat that shway. A lot of people, when this shoe first came out, they didn't like it. They said it was ugly, weird looking. And a lot of people say that to this day, but I'm still a big fan of the Air Jordan 13, especially the OG colorways, and especially one of the five colorways, the black and red iconic, man. You feel me? So, y'all already know what the last shoe is. The last shot against the Utah Jazz. Go ahead and get, get a little tap to Brian Russell. Bag up. All net. The bottom. The bottom of the net. And that was the last shot. He was wearing the last shot Air Jordan 14s, which would be considered, of course, the black and red uh, colorway in the Air Jordan 14 silhouette. He debuted this sneaker. Wasn't even released yet. But, of course, he's MJ. He can rock this sneaker that's going to come out next year. So, he actually did two shoes. For the um he actually had two shoes for that 97 98 season he rocked this one mostly during the season and in the finals he pulled out the last game guys so far he must have knew he was gonna hit that shot he must have knew it was gonna be over with a wrap we going home with six championships against uh two against the utah jazz back to back i know they hate it i know utah jazz fans hate mj bro i know y'all do but he had to do it to you in the last shot of 14s michael jordan's last shot of the last season with the Chicago Bulls. To me, his, 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 his last shot, period. The Air Jordan 14 last shots. Whew. Not one of my favorite Jordans, but definitely one of the most iconic Jordans. And this is the last shoe in the black and red collection, bread collection of Air Jordans 1 through 14, man. When he was playing with the Chicago Bulls, all these shoes with the Chicago Bulls, black and red colorway. Anyway, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I appreciate y'all for sitting through all of these sneakers with your boy watching it, man. Um, a lot of people might appreciate uh, MJ and the Bulls like I did, even being growing up being an Atlanta Hawks fan. The only time I didn't go root for the Bulls is when they played the Atlanta Hawks. Um, but I, I used to, man, just grew up watching MJ, his motivation, his dedication, his killer instinct, his drive, his creativity. And what he did for the game, man, what he did for the culture, everything, man, is just what I grew up on. You know what I'm saying? And to me, I, I, like I said, I've, I've lived watching Kobe. I lived watching, um, rest in peace Kobe, by the way, and I lived watching um, LeBron. I watched all these players, but to this day, I just have not seen nobody have the, the, the drive, the motivation, the killer instinct, like I said, the creativity, and the person that was just purely made to play the game of basketball, like Michael Jeffrey Jordan. I'm just I'm, I'm just like one of the biggest Air Jordan fans, and a lot of people are. I know I'm going to have people in the comments saying LeBron is the GOAT, LeBron is better, this and that and the other. And a lot of that, those people are that, that, that newer generation. Most of the guys my age who actually saw Jordan play live know that you... 
he, we've seen all these players. That's the only advantage we got on the younger generation is we've, we've lived through all of these players playing. You live just wa through watching Kobe and LeBron play. We actually seen Jordan play, man. So that's like the advantage that we have. We've seen every, and we can compare because we've seen every play, great player. I mean, it's recent great players. We got Bill Russell. We got Will Chamberlain. We got the guys from back in the 70s and the 60s. And they'll probably give an argument that those guys were the best players. You got guys that are 60 years old, 70 years old. And they they won't go argue that those guys were the best players while we argue Michael Jordan. But even a lot of those guys would even admit that MJ is the best player ever, the greatest of all time, in my humble opinion. So that's it, man. I appreciate y'all for watching. Hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the notification bell so you can become a part of Rich Nation. Stand all the way up to the moon on them and keep watching my videos because that's what I'm here for. Mike, rich, no hype, just kick.